What is the nature of the global power structure? Despite much obfuscation, this is relatively easy to deduce. At the top of the pyramid, we have international bankers and a handful of families who have controlled international finance for the last few centuries. These families' wealth and power are institutionalized through central banks, such as the Bank of England, the Federal Reserve, and others, and international financial and political institutions like the World Bank, United Nations, World Economic Forum, International Monetary Fund, and others, as well as more secretive groups like the Trilateral Commission, Bilderberg Group, and the Council on Foreign Relations. Obviously, the top of the power structure is the international banksters and monopoly capitalist old money families and dynasties, such as the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, Schiffs, Warburgers, Morgans, Barings, and others. Central bankers control the money, and money is power, where money is a generalization of human utility, and all power is centralized in the hands of those with the most financial and technological capital. This arbitrarily diminishes the net utility of humankind, impedes our rightful destiny, and poses a threat to human dignity and sovereignty as a whole. The control of central bankers extends to schools, media, economics, etc. through the corporate government partnership. Although it is impossible to determine light due to obfuscation and deception, it is likely that these financial dynasties have several trillion dollars to their name, if not more. In his article titled Monopoly Capitalism and Fascisto-Communism, Chris Langen says, quote, Due to the explosive nature of compound interest and a self-reinforcing financial system for which the banksters themselves are largely responsible, sufficiently large concentrations of money gravitate like black holes. Wealth is pulled in at an accelerating rate, but cannot escape. The global power structure is actually very anti-fragile. People underestimate this and think it's all a mess and will likely collapse the next time there is a housing bubble like in 2008 or a Great Depression like in the 1930s. In fact, these were engineered by the bankers and they benefited handsomely. There's no significant elite resistance to the globalist, neoliberal, internationalist agenda by any faction of the global elite. The new rich, such as big tech CEOs, etc., are very easily assimilated into the global power structure and gain nothing by going against it, and the political and economic institutions are thoroughly controlled by international finance. The elite consists of no more than a few thousand people in a set of interdependent factions who are basically on the same page with respect to global issues and the financial slash socio-political world order, including, Langen says, international bankers who possess a long-standing money supply, monopoly on the money supply, the super rich in general, including European royalty, the hereditary plutocracy, which owns majority interests in major corporations throughout the extended military industrial security complex, and various relatively small time new rich, including the majority of techie billionaires. What these people all have in common is money and power, which they use to manipulate governments, academia, and the mass media. In the words of the great psychologist Carl Jung, despite man's proud claim to have conquered nature, he is still its victim because he has not yet learned to master himself. The world is now controlled by influences that do not have our best interests at heart, and this reflects a deeper spiritual sickness. This is reflected by our worship of tokenization, accumulation, and success, which has led to an untenable and unsustainable relationship with our planet's ecology. Ironically, many of the solutions put forth to address the environmental problems we as a species now face, up to and including biosphere collapse, are merely cynical ploys by the global plutocracy to gain further wealth and control. Even institutional religion, once the hope and salvation of the mass of humanity, is now incorporated into the global power structure. But when we understand the teleology of human existence in the individual and societal level, parasitic divergence becomes not only immoral, but irrational. We need to see ourselves as images of the ultimate reality, whose actions penetrate deeper spiritual reality, meaning that man is not the result of brute physical processes, but instead the unfolding of the teleology of the universe, designed to refine the identity of reality within creation. We can take control of our, our destiny, cease religious infighting, and achieve the human destiny that we all want. In the words of Marcus Garvey, man in the full knowledge of himself is a superb and supreme creature of creation. When man becomes possessor of the knowledge of himself, he becomes master of his environment, the captain of his own ship, the director of his own destiny, the accomplisher of his own ends. As individuals and as a society, we must become aware of the problems we're facing, which I've briefly outlined, organize in intentional communities, build out the infrastructure to articulate a well-defined alternative direction for human destiny, and communities of creatives and visionaries capable of making this happen. In the words of Chris Lang, in a society that accepts truth on the physical and metaphysical levels behaves more sustainably and with greater resilience than a society anchored to a flawed, inexorably sinking worldview. It offers real meaning to its members and is not disrupted by frequent descents into irrationality. By encouraging intellectual competence and creativity, it has the potential to maintain a high general standard of living. 
We must understand and apply CTMU metaphysics to form the basis of a meta religion that faithfully mirrors the inner structure of reality and retains the spiritual insights of the world's great faiths, allowing everyone to embrace their religious and cultural heritage while resting these religious and scriptural languages on the shared foundation of absolute truth and logos. We must recognize that reality has ends that it is trying to achieve and use CTMU parameterized metacognition to determine this for ourselves and actualize it in accordance with God's will. We must understand that we are secondary images of God and are thus directly connected to the greatest possible source of knowledge and power and use this internal strength to do what is good, even if it means sacrificing our own well-being. We need to reinvigorate the creative fire of mankind and the future of Western civilization through a platonic idealist framework that explain scientific observation and can ground our pseudoscientific and technocratic philosophies of global governance in the logos and 21st century metaphysics. We've seen quite clearly in the publication We've seen quite clearly in the publications of technocratic institutions like the World Economic Forum and others that mechanistic materialism, which is the official metaphysic of academia and the scientific establishment, leads to technocratic totalitarianism. Obviously, it is incredibly easy to buy off scientists and academic science as a whole to support whatever agenda is needed. Science tells you you are a chemical scum, a cog in the machine, and society tells you to act like it. Chris Langan writes that under the current unhappy marriage of monopoly capitalism and mechanistic materialism, man is viewed as an economic agent subject to monetary control through centralization of which the entire future of mankind can be in principle determined by mechanistically by the calculated pushing of buttons, representing a complete negation of human dignity and sovereignty, reducing the human race to cattle. Materialism at its core, I believe, is a denial of the human spirit and cannot persist. We need the full reinvigorated core of believers in God and truth to make any meaningful progress with spreading the CTMU and fighting parasitic divergence. People are basically not stupid, so we need a logical theology such as that provided by the CTMU Metalogic to prevent religious attrition, which I've outlined in countless other videos. A mere dissident political movement is not enough without God, meta-religion, and a more fundamental understanding of reality than the elites have. Chris Langan says that without active and genuine resistance, governments increasingly behave like malevolent egregores, using secrecy, disinformation, and indoctrination, coercion, and conditioning to control their citizens. To fight this, we need the development of truly parallel communities, structures, institutions, and cultures. A return to agrarian intentional communities, new schools, monasteries, and places of higher learning to make the CTMU movement a significant cultural force as everything else goes to hell in a handbasket. A return to family, culture, and traditional values as a whole. The remoralization of young men and women. Incorporating into intentional communities the art and classical aesthetics native to Western civilization, whose spirit is inexorably bound with the logos. We need to have a new monetary system based on the intrinsic purpose of human existence, reimagining the economy as a vast favor bank where all work together for the physical, mental, and spiritual health of their communities, to the inculcation of service and finding true meaning through all strata of human identity, up to and including God Almighty. The telic economy being an anthropic configuration of the mind of God, in the words of Chris Langan's 1989 paper on the paradoxical connection between money and brains, can, extant can instantiate God's logos over time as the unfolding of the supreme human spirit, the true manifest destiny being not colonial expansion, but rather the slow march towards the kingdom of heaven. We must bring build structures that serve people rather than those that people must serve. Central banks, the economy, the government, institutes of higher learning, and the news media can be tools for human welfare and flourishing. We need to think from first principles about how to create the kind of future we want and the institutions needed to do so. We are at a fork in the road. Our destiny has not yet been determined. We can either have what Chris Langan calls a human singularity in which responsibility for human welfare and destiny is distributed over a species, species as a whole, rather than a small cast of elites deciding the lives and fates of every human being on the planet. We have a mass expansive spiritual awakening through CTMU meta-religion, and in the words of Jesuit priest Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, we shall harness for God the energies of love, and then for the second time in history, in the history of the world, humanity will have discovered fire. We will reach the Omega Point, a term coined by Chardin, the final end and coming of God's kingdom, where God is recognized in all and by all. And we can fulfill our purpose as a species, becoming a sort of meta-species, reborn and respeciated through the will and wisdom of God. 
in contrast with the current elite's idea of transhumanism. Let's call this metahumanism, which takes human identity, stratifies it to all levels of human organiz social organization up to and including God, embeds us in a higher order self-referential reality beyond the confines of the material universe, extracts out a teleology, an end slash purpose of human existence from the inner workings of ultimate reality and reformulates our purpose as human beings to fulfill the intrinsic end and moral law of reality as a whole as a species. Or we might have a tech singularity in which whoever controls the technological and financial capital, namely the powers thus far discussed, controls the world. Chris Langan breaks down the playbook as follows. To own and control every aspect of reality, including free human beings, simply create a fake simulated reality, legalize it, and move everything into it as tokens, including real human beings and their prop all of their rights and property. Attach dollar values to the tokens. Then do whatever you like with the tokens and demand that real human beings conform to your moves on pain of prosecution and ruination. Now you can make sense of the pseudoscientific hype around transhumanism, genetic engineering, the metaverse, virtual reality, central bank digital currency, social credit score, and the tokenization of nearly every facet of our existence. Artificial intelligence and surveillance technology as well will lead to the centralization of more wealth through automation and increased power to control and manipulate the public by governments and corporations. This too shall pass. But how? Chris Langan says, we need something like a new priesthood of hyper-intelligent, highly educated people who are fluent in the foundational language of reality. I've provided the language, but now we need someone who's actually willing to put their nose to the grindstone and become fluent in it. We need a lot of people who are willing to do that. There have to be guardians of human welfare because we have enemies, an immune system, a priestly immune system that is going to stop this from taking over. And then we need maximum distribution of knowledge so that people are immunized against what the parasites and predators are trying to do. Keep learning and growing. More videos to come. Some closing words from Chris Langan. It's time to sell that cloak, buy a sword, learn how to use it, and develop the clarity to know when you have no other choice but to do so. Cooperate with evil, and you can forget about heaven. Let the light shine forth in the darkness, and the peace of our Father in heaven be upon you. Thanks and subscribe. Peace.